this section, I would like to demonstrate uh, the uh, process of developing technique uh, using my uh, part of my original composition I'm working on right now. Uh, this piece is like flamenco-ish rhythmical uh, music and requires a very fast passage and also the sound, like strumming guitar sound out of harp. So I thought this kind of this material may be interesting uh, to try. Before uh, start practicing, I need to have a concrete plan what to what and how I want to play. So I need to have a concrete idea in my mind, and then I can try that idea in an actual uh, physical world. So in this case. I wrote down the passage uh, I want to uh, practice now. So, in a way, uh, it's composition. So I got my own music idea, but it's it's written down uh, as an information on the written music and the sheet music. So I use this one. Use this kind of information as a basis of my concrete plan, how I want to play. So the tempo is, uh, needs to go up to like 160 for uh, eighth note. And, um, and I want to have a, a very rhythmical kind of feel, like a flamenco guitar music. And then passage, uh, I want to make, I want to have a very uh, clear uh, sound a clarity on on a sound and also there a I'm gonna tap uh, the soundboard like a uh, often flamenco guitar you, you hear the tapping sound of the soundboard so it's, I, I want to mimic that type of sound so on the left hand while I'm playing the very fast passage in the right hand and I already figured out uh, the fingerings and how what kind of sequence of movement I can apply to get this passage done. So in a way, I already use the basic idea of technique about technique. I already know or I, ha I already have experienced and I kind of figure out maybe this way works. So in a way, I did everything I could do uh, in my mind. So the mind preparation is basically done. And I also plan out the pedals. So now, next step is, let's try this one. But I cannot immediately play on a tempo, uh, like 160. It's, it's very fast. Uh, like. So, this, I mean, it's not easy to play a, a triplet like this and in this tempo. So, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna slow down quite a bit. Maybe. What about 120? Like a. Uh, this is a, a two-third of the uh, speed I want to get eventually. So, and and then I have a image uh, of like a note needs to be very clear, and the rhythm needs to be very very uh, accurate, and then have a uh, flamenco guitar like like passion, excitement, and uh, kind of rhythmical edge. Actually, I, I was supposed to kind of make a lot of mistake and then kind of fix it. But what I felt is I didn't uh, sit correctly. Uh, my hip was kind of uncomfortable. So with this and uh, this comfort, I couldn't, I cannot get to the uh, fast tempo. So I'm gonna collect that. And actually, there are a few checkpoints before uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, to to improve your technique. So first, maybe. 
uh, sitting is very important. So in, I was kind of a little nervous in, in front of the camera, so I didn't really check my sitting properly. So now I can feel it while I'm playing. So I uh, now try to adjust my hip. Okay, uh, placement is good. And then my uh, backbone is okay, comfortable, and my head is on top. All right, and then my shoulder, okay, I can move my shoulder my arm my wrist is okay relaxed and then i was a little bit uh unintentional about my breathing because i was kind of playing in front of the camera is kind of making me nervous a little bit uh, so let's breathe before i start playing a phrase I didn't breathe in uh, after I finish. That's why I, I made a mistake there. So good, I started making mistakes. So now I, I have a place to fix. Okay, so, and I have, I felt uh, my finger wasn't in the, the best spot to get a uh, clear sound uh, or the sound I want to get. So I want to fix that. But before uh, fixing that, um, I want to kind of talk about evalu evaluation uh, process. So after I try uh, playing the phrase, and then I need to evaluate how I'm doing. Uh, am I doing okay or not? Uh, is there any place I have to fix? So that process is uh, what just what I did is okay, I had a concrete plan and I play using my body motor apparatus and then I pluck the harp, I play the instrument and then actual sound came out, the external music came out and then I was listening to this. I paid attention and this uh, actual music kind of feedback to my mind and then now i i'm trying to compare uh, what i heard is actually close to what i was intending to uh make and uh, there was a little bit over a uh, some pass some notes are not coming out as as much as i want so i need to fix that i i kind of realize that and the next uh thing i have to evaluate is is there any discomfort or kind of uh, any anything like inefficient so I ask my body and then you know uh, yeah I, I correct my sitting and uh, breathing so there's few th uh, things I, I wasn't really happy about it my body wasn't happy about so um, and I'm, I'm kind of paid attention to my sensation and feedback but uh, it, uh, sometimes you don't remember <laughs> How 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 I how you f were feeling while you were playing because you're concentrating on the notes so much. So it takes a little uh, practice to divide your attention to the music at the same time to your body, but not only the hand. Like uh, the different part of your body, we uh, I we w went through today in this seminar, especially like uh, these parts in involved uh, heavily involved in uh, harp playing. Like, uh, remember the collarbone, uh, sternum uh, joint, uh, shoulder blade joint, upper bone joint. So the, if you pay attention to the joint, actually, uh, you, you, you can kind of monitor what's going on on your, the main body part which is involved in uh, playing the harp. So, and then if you pay attention, these places, in a way that that uh, we we uh, create the memory of what's going on while I'm playing, while we are playing. So paying attention to the body parts or body in general is very important. But it's kind of a 
it's not as easy as it sounds. So it requires a practice and also it requires some time to create uh, the habit of doing it. And, and then the next step actually to uh, inf reinforce that memory, it's better, it's good to uh, intellectualize the process. For example, I explained what I was fixing um, uh, verbally. Um, that it means like I, I use a word, so it's intellectualized. So let's try one more time. And then if I make a mistake, let's try fix it. Hey, here. We may make what I felt was my elbow kind of stuck there. And then I was using hand this way instead of this way. So I need to say, tell myself, okay, I need to relax my shoulder, kind of keep my shoulder floating and kind of go anywhere, make, keep it in a floating position and that, so that the shoulder can move anywhere the hands goes. So that's the intellectualized command I told myself. Okay, so it went better. And then if I practice this way, um, I even if I forgot the feeling of it, but actually if I remember what I intellectualized and that intellectualized information can be a uh, trigger to recall the, the sensation, uh, the memory of my, my own body, memory of the sensation. So, and then all this together comes and then I can uh, uh, do the same thing again later. So, Not too bad. And then once I get this point, actually, um, I try not to get too lunatic about find the small cause of the failure. It's more like at this stage, I try to get used to uh, being be successful. The more we succeed, the, uh, the, uh, the, the stronger memory of, of, of over, uh, how we're going to use body and how, the mind. And we, we can reinforce that memory. So try to uh, just repeat as much as I can. And then once I start failing, actually, I tend to fail over and over. So when that bad cycle starts happening, I have to kind of uh, step back again and then evaluate. Am I doing right? Am I hearing the uh, sound I want to hear? Um, how my body is doing? So, and then kind of we, we do, I do. Um, this cycle uh, or many, many times. And then f finally, uh, my technique kind of getting get more stabilized. And then I can expect the same good result uh, over and over.